All right, so fantastic. All right, so this is a, a different class for uh, Eric and I. We oftentimes do what's called the Washington State Housing Finance Commission class. And that is a five hour course um, that is very much geared towards um, first time buyers, yes, but it's also very specifically around a lot of um, financial programs that they have that are for first time home, home buyers of uh, certain kind of uh, income levels. And uh, I'll apologize if you hear some ringing in the background. That was my dog having dinner. That's why I just realized I should not have let you feed him. <laughs> so be loud. I know, welcome Zoom. Uh, so anyway, uh, Eric and I though, um, recognize that the material that we share all the time within that class is relevant for all purchasing. And so we also do have, We've been doing for 18 years also a two hour version of the same coursework that just goes through the basics of purchasing. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're not going to dive into the down payment assistance programs or any of the Washington State Housing Finance bond programs or anything like that. Um, but those are products that if you think you might end up qualifying for them, you'll definitely want to circle back around with Eric after the fact to um, have your personal situation uh, considered in that, in that regard. Um, my stuff doesn't specifically run into that set of programs unless we're just working with a lender that you do qualify for the programs. And you're going to see why that interacts with my side of the transactions um, as we go through my part of the presentation. Okay. So uh, moving on, my, my main goal on talking about the real estate side of things is to talk about what you need to know what you want to avoid and how you can win when we're in the kind of market that we have right now. Because as I say there, winning strategies for today's Puget Sound marketplace. Because if you haven't been looking into the marketplace, um, you may not be as familiar with the fact that it's pretty, um, pretty competitive. Um, there's a few rare instances where there's not as much competition, um, but most of all the county areas, particularly outlying areas since we've had work from home options, have been at a pretty fast pace, including going even further out on the peninsulas and into Eastern Washington and, and uh, other areas that might normally have been considered either vacation or, or uh, retirement areas. So what you need to know, as I said, market is hot. What that also then translates into is that when the market is hot and there's a lot of demand and little inventory, it also means that we typically see appreciation in this market of uh, higher than normal. An average amount of appreciation, meaning growth on the value of your property, is two to three percent when you have a stable market. But what we have is this hyper market. And with that, we're seeing growth in every market area between about five to 15 percent. Now, comparing that to other times we've had hot markets, between like 2005 and 2007, we were running 12 to 35 percent appreciation. But that's also when we had the Wild West of loans. Um, the downside was when we went into the great housing recession of mid 2007 to 2010, where we went negative 35% as a whole. Uh, and then starting in April of 2012, 2011 was a flat year. And then April of 2012, we went right back into a very busy market running eight to about 14%. And in some micro markets, as much as 25% growth um, from 2012 to where we are now with only one slight slowdown, which was from about June of 2018 to February of 2019. So um, with that, when we have a hot market and homes are selling pretty quickly, and that means compelling homes, right? Homes that are well-priced, good condition, great locations, um, the things that people are looking for the most, um, that is going to drive a lot of factors on how you approach doing your home buying. So it's really important, like number three says, to know what your preferences are and to try and hone that down as quickly as you can. Now it's fine if you wanna take some time, but just know, as we have an example with one of our clients right now, they started looking in the spring of last year and the marketplace that they've identified as where they wanna buy has grown 10% in the last year. And they keep complaining about the fact that, oh my gosh, everything's more expensive. And like, well, that, that's naturally what happens in a market like this. 
And it's not, you know, people keep thinking for some reason that it might go down. And right now we don't see any indicators that it will because we still have a shortage of inventory. And as of December, uh, 2020, had the lowest amount of inventory we'd ever seen. So until, unless we have some magical uh, sprinkling of houses in our area, um, we're gonna continue in this trend for a while. So you also need to really narrow down for yourself, how much time do you have, right? We all know that time is the number one thing that we all um, are trying to hang on to and use and use well. Uh, it's a thing that once it's gone, you don't get it back. So we know that when you're looking online, you want to be also out looking in person and narrowing down what your defining factors are for you so that when you are really, truly ready, you can get making decisions. Because what we know is that when fear kicks in, when people feel like they don't know enough, they're much more reticent to take action. So if you feel like you don't know exactly what you want yet, you're probably not going to take action. You don't really know what you could afford, you're not going to take action. You don't really know what you like, you're not going to take action. You're just going to get online. And I don't know how many of you may have seen that SNL skit about all the 30 year olds, <laughs> like the new, new porn version is like looking on Zillow, you know, <laughs> it's kind of a hilarious, you know, um, comparison, but you could spend a whole lifetime just looking on Zillow and not doing anything at all. Uh, but you're going to be working against your own best self-interest if that's all you do. Um, so the last thing I point on here is what you don't know can hurt you. So if you're not familiar with what's going on in the market, if you jump into things without understanding how it impacts you, if you don't have your financing set up correctly, it can definitely come back and bite you in the butt and in sometimes ways that you really don't want. Um, so we're going to uh, start kind of diving into all of these different elements.